okay uh, welcome back uh, everybody so we're in chapter oscillations so what did you learn last time uh, in the last class we learned about a uh, simple harmonic motion uh, we also learn about periodic motion. We define that if the motion repeats itself after a certain interval of time, it's a periodic motion and uh, we call those simple harmonic motion. Uh, we look, looked at uh, several examples, uh, a few examples of uh, simple harmonic motion, just like, you know, mass spring system. Also, we looked at uh, simple pendulum, right? Uh, and then we did a few key equations we wrote here. So I'm going to write those down. Um, revise again. So we said for a position versus time graph of a simple harmonic motion can be modeled by this mathematical function uh, xt equal to a cos 2 pi ft where x is a position at a time t, a is the maximum, a is the amplitude, right, it's the maximum displacement from equilibrium position, um, this cos, we have function here, and then we have f, f is the frequency of the uh, oscillation, okay, and then we also know f equal to, I'll, I'll write that down after some time. Uh, and then we also wrote, uh, you know, equation for Vt, which is the, you know, but what's the, but how can we uh, write the velocity, right? So uh, Vt equal to minus of V max. If you guys remember, we have a little bit different here. Instead of cos, we have sine, right? 2 pi ft okay and then we said this b max has a specific thing here so b max is it can be written as 2 pi f times a okay now um so you see this is a cost function so graph is, I'm not going to do the detail here, graph is going to look something like this, right? You start here. This is a sine function, so graph is going to start from origin at t equal to 0, right? At time t equal to 0, this thing is 0, okay? So for this is the position versus time graph, for velocity versus time graph has to start, it's a sine function, so it's like this, right? Okay? And then we also had uh, acceleration as a function of time, a t is equal to minus a max times cos 2 pi f t, okay? So again, uh, let's do um, acceleration function, this is a cos, right? So this is cos, but then it has a negative sign, so we said instead of having it positive, then the cos function, I mean the acceleration graph should start somewhere down here with the negative value and then goes up and, and so on, okay? So, so you can keep continuing like that, okay? Same thing here, so continue here and then it keeps going, right? It, because it's a periodic function. Uh, and then here we said this a max is really equal to what? So we looked at using mass spring system so this acceleration maximum acceleration must be given by k k by m for the spring mass system okay k oh yes k by m actually so never mind not that quantity here I, I made a mistake here guys so what we did was like this minus k by m times x that's what we mean Okay, so this is another way of writing the same whole thing here in terms of position. And then we said, you know, acceleration does depend on position, and we said, and then the net force also depends on position. That's what we did. Um, so this is 
the review of what you learned last time. Mm, do you guys have any question? Uh, please, uh, please, please do post your question in a class discussion session on Teams. Uh, because if you have a question, maybe it's not just you. You know, maybe you have, you know, one of your classmates may have the same question. So it would be easier if you just post it there and then, you know, one of the, your classmate may answer or I'm more than happy to answer the question. Okay? So if you have a question, please do post it. simple harmonic motion for mass spring system and for we do it for you know mass spring system how do you determine the potential energy u equal to what so we have a spring here we have some mass here right uh, so we can write this uh, elastic potential energy as u equal to half kx squared where k is a spring constant x is the stress from the equilibrium position, right? So change in the length of the spring. Usually we write this, you know, delta x rather than x, but x is also okay as long as we said okay x is, you know, change in the length, okay? Uh, and we also wrote an uh, equation for kinetic energy, K equal to half m mass of the block, not mass of the spring, right? Uh, spring is supposed to be massless. I mean, of course, that's not possible, but what it really means is in comparison to the mass of the block, the spring has a negligible mass, okay? So, mb squared, right? So, to get the total mechanical energy, Assuming there is no loss, there is no loss of energy, we can write total energy E just as a, you know mechanical energy, which is the sum of potential energy U plus kinetic energy K, and this turns out to be half uh, m half sorry half K x square K x square plus half m v square. All right. So that is the energy of uh, energy in simple harmonic motion for a mass spring system. Uh, we also wrote an equation for how to determine the frequency of oscillation of a mass spring system. Do you guys remember anything about that? Okay. So frequency, you guys know now. Frequency f equal to what? One over two pi, and then k by m. Right. This gives us the equation. This gives uh, you know using this equation we can find the frequency where k is a uh, spring constant uh, constant m is again mass I'm just gonna write this here m is mass of block on the spring okay so. Basically, frequency depends on uh, just the spring constant. The spring constant has to do with what? The material that the spring is made up of, okay? Uh, so, uh, and then M uh, has to do with the mass. So, frequency depends on the spring constant and the mass. Uh, once we have a frequency, once we determine frequency, we can also calculate the time period or vice versa because t equal to 1 over f, right? So if we know frequency, we can calculate the time period. If we know time period, we can also calculate the frequency. So it's pretty easy, straightforward here. 
so that was about the things we learned uh, in the last lecture. What else we learned? We also learned a little bit about other system exhibiting simple harmonic motion, right? So one of the example was uh, we had um, pendulum here. So we, um, I'm just going to put this here, this way. We had the pendulum here, something like this, it was hanging here, and then let's say this is... Uh, so this pendulum of some length, uh, it has some mass hanging here, right? Um, and then it has some force, tangential force on this direction, Ft, and then it has a length L, and then it has angle theta. And then we said we can actually find the frequency of this pendulum, F equal to... 1 over 2 pi is square root is square root of uh, L by T and Z by L, guys. D by L, right? So, because another way to remember this is this. Um, I also get confused sometimes. One way to remember is this. See, G is what is the uh, unit here? Meter per second is square. And then L is meter, right? So if I divide this, this meter, meter uh, gets, wait, what happened here? Yes, a oh, meter, meter gets cancelled, so you have really S minus 2, right? I mean, so you have, uh, so you have under S square root, you have a dimension like this, 1 over S square, right? Because this is a square root, if we take out the square root, then we end up with what? 1 over s here, right? That's just the second, okay, here. The second 1 over second is what? That's the hertz, okay? This is just a unit. This is kind of, uh, you know, making sure that, okay, oh, how do I know whether I have this g by l or l by g? Sometimes, you know, it can get confused. But if you practice it long, then it becomes also habit that you'll remember, oh, frequency has to do g on the top, okay? All right. So, uh, now if we know the frequency, we can also find the period, again doing what, 1 over f, right? Okay. Alright, so uh, frequency of the simple pendulum depends on the acceleration due to gravity or free fall, gravity, you know, free fall acceleration. Uh, f also depends on the length of the pendulum but there is an inverse relation now obviously if we take this pendulum here we are you know calculating the frequency and then we got some value i don't know maybe like you know, one fourth hertz or something like that and then we decide to go to moon what happens this value in the moon the acceleration due to gravity of the moon is actually a lot smaller so the frequency we have there would be much much smaller okay so that's the takeaway from last time uh, oh we need to continue with the just a moment guys let me check if my video is still playing okay so it is playing all right so So last, so last time, this is where we had started and now we stopped, right? We were talking about physical pendulum. Physical pendulum, right? So we have something like this here. I had an example of ruler. Or you can, if you can remember, we also said, okay, you know, really, any object, uh, you know, extended object that has its mass distributed along its length or we can assume that as a physical pendulum so we said we could also use our just hand right if we had assuming this is our pi bud we can also have this c oscillation of a hand especially when we are walking it's really that's what our hand is doing right it's going in back and forth or i don't know which is back and forth uh, so uh, 
Uh, and then we can said we can also use this guy here as pendulum, right? Uh, if we had a pivot point here. So, um, so let's make a diagram here, quick diagram. Assuming this is, let me just use this, it's much easier. So this is our pendulum that has the distance, uh, we are going to use the uh, distance D. This distance is the distance from the pivot point all the way to the, so pivot point all the way to the center of gravity here. So this point is CZ, okay, so that is D. Remember in simple pendulum we had, a, in the case of simple pendulum, what did we do? We had this, we had mass here, uh, and then we took the whole length of the pendulum, and we talk about this theta. However, right now, we are not talking about whole length, we are only looking at the D. Remember, there is, a, there is a reason why we have that also, okay? In a few minutes, you will see. So D, um, and then it turns out that we can write the equation for the frequency of a physical pendulum as oh, let me write this down. Yes, 1 over 2 pi guys everywhere you see this 1 over 2 pi okay so now by now you should be kind of make sense 1 over 2 pi meaning something is repeating it's going in circle 2 pi means what guys 360 degree right so it's kind of going maybe it's not going you may not look like going in circle but Really, if we look at it, the periodic motion is going in circle in a way, okay? So it's kind of a, so it's a repeating, okay? So this, every time you see 2 pi somewhere in any equation you are doing, then there may be something that has to do with the circular motion or that has to do with the repetitive motion, okay, rather than circular motion. Not necessarily circular motion. I mean, it is related, right? Circular motion and um, periodic motion are related, but if you see 2 pi, it means something repetitiveness is there, okay? So f equal to 1 over 2 pi uh, is square root of mzd by i, okay? So it turns out that we can write the frequency of this physical pendulum here as 1 over 2 pi square root of m is the mass of this guy here. So I'm going to just write m here, okay? So Oh, maybe I'll write here, M is mass of pendulum, you know which pendulum I'm talking about, right? Physical pendulum, not this guy here, this is the little mass here, I mean, not that, okay? I'm gonna, in fact, erase this so you guys don't get confused. Uh, G is uh, acceleration due to gravity, uh, or, you know, free fall acceleration. D is the distance between b slash n means between okay between um pivot or pivot however you want to say pivot and center of gravity cz okay i is what is i guys you think what i symbol represents in physics not i but in physics i is Moment of inertia of this object here. Okay. Um, so so yes. So this is the equation for frequency of the physical pendulum. Can you guys do it? You know, can you find the time period of this physical pendulum if you have this equation, or if you have a value for frequency? You should be right it's because the frequency is inversely proportional to time the period. So you should be able to find the period of the oscillation if you have information about frequency. All right. Okay. All right. Do you guys have any question here? Any comment? No question, no comment. All right, uh, let me check my video real quick.
all right I'm gonna stop it here and then uh, in the next video we'll look about uh, damping oscillation and other things